So Arna, your, uh, your uh, career took uh, quite a turn from the time you were doing computers till you went into recording. Tell me something about uh, your experiences recording at the plant. Well, when I quit the computer business, it was uh, 1972. I just always wanted to be uh, playing music, and so I, I had a band. And I was a regional sales manager for a Boston computer company, and I moved back to L.A. with my band, but unfortunately, my band didn't, didn't go anywhere. We didn't get to be rock stars. But I had rented a building on the Venice Beach, and I thought, well, this would be a great place to be a rock star, but when it, when it didn't work out that way, I, I decided I'd put in some tape recorders and let the bands come to me, and I started a career. I didn't know I was starting a career as a studio owner and a recording engineer, but that's what I was doing starting in 1973. By 1979, I, I had a going career doing, in those years, in the late 70s, I was doing a lot of digital recordings when it was brand new for people like uh, Count Basie and Ella Fitzgerald doing uh, did a record two records with Dolly Parton and, uh, we pioneered in doing digital recordings a long time before people had compact disc players in their homes and it kind of felt homey to me because I had come to case and I had gotten my degrees in digital computers so I was recording with digital computers and it made, it made a lot of sense to me to combine music and, and technology and, and to wind up doing that and I kept doing that. Uh, I moved from Spectrum to Hollywood. I had a studio called Mars and at Mars I did a record uh, with a guy named Rockwell and we got Michael Jackson to come in sing on a song called Somebody's Watching Me, which was my first number one hit record that I produced. And then I had another studio called Hollywood Central, and then I moved to San Francisco and bought the plant. And uh, I've been a recording engineer and a studio owner for most of the last 36 years, doing records for people like Santana, Van Morrison, we did six Metallica albums. Um, it's been a lot of fun to be in a studio every day making music. It wasn't the way I thought I'd be making music. I thought I'd be playing bass in a band, but in a way my instrument became the recording studio. Well, the, the 60s there spawned a whole movement of San Francisco music that went right along with the hippie movement. Let's see, there was the Jefferson Airplane with Grace Slick, there was the Quicksilver Messenger Service, Country Joe and the Fish, the Doobie Brothers was an early 70s band, Carlos Santana and Santana, and of course because Bill Graham was there, Bill Graham Presents was the number one rock impresario. So because of all these bands and all that great music, there, were, there suddenly became a recording scene. And, and, and a couple of famous L.A. recording studio owners like Wally Hyder moved into San Francisco. And so the next thing you knew, doing sort of hippie music with hippie rock bands uh, became a thing. And the record plant of Los Angeles decided, well, we got to have a resort a getaway studio and let's put it in Sausalito. And so they built a studio in Sausalito and uh, they called it the record plant of Sausalito. And uh, it changed its name to the Plant Recording Studios uh, in the late 70s because one of the two original founders died and it was sold. And uh, it was sold to a second owner and then there was a third owner. Then the government seized it in a drug seizure. Then a fourth owner and then the fourth owner brought me in as a partner. And by the time I got there, which was 1988, the plant had been the most famous recording studio and the most notorious in the whole rock music business because of the government seizing it and the drug seizure and because of really sex, drugs, and rock and roll was invented at my studio in Sausalito. But when I took it over in 88, it was on hard times and the music scene was diminished. And I, my goal was to sort of rebuild the place and renovate it and make it great again. That's been my mission for the last 20 years. What a difference a day made Twenty-four little hours What 
the sun and the flowers Yesterday was blue, dear Today I'm a part of you, dear My lonely nights are through, dear Since you said you were mine Lord, what a difference a day makes. 